Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I haven't made a video in a couple of weeks, so I thought I'd just touch base with you guys and let you know what I've been up to. Before we begin here, I would like to say a quick thank you to the five or seven or so subscribers that jumped on after the Johnny's Reloading Bench live stream the other night. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being here and hope you stick around and see what we've got going on. We are getting ready for deer season here in Tennessee. Um, it has been bow season for the last couple of weeks, um, but my bow until just about a week ago um, has been in the shop getting restrung and just not ready to go. And neither my wife and I are quite up to the level we'd like to be at as far as shooting goes um, with the bows to deer hunt with them. So we're gonna wait until muzzleloader season, possibly rifle season coming up here in a couple of weeks. On that subject, um, I have got a Thompson Center Compass here in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, I just picked this up. In fact, um, here in the next couple of videos, you're probably going to see me referencing um, reloading or hand loading um, for a cartridge that I don't have a gun in yet. Um, that's 6.5 Creedmoor, and I do now have the gun. It is this. Uh, Thompson Center Compass, and I have it topped off with a, let me see here, it's an Athlon Talos, uh, 3 to 12 by 40 rifle scope with a duplex reticle in it. Um, because my wife is kind of a new hunter, I, I didn't think that a busier reticle such as um, an MOA reticle or anything like that would help her out at all. Um, we went straight duplex. Um, 4 to 12 power magnification. Actually, I think this one is, no, it is 4 to 12. I was thinking it was 3 to 12. Oh, it is 3 to 12. Okay, 3 to 12. I'd originally thought I'd ordered a 3 to 9, but I was really glad when I got it and it was the 3 to 12. That'll let me do some uh, group tests and stuff at 100 yards fairly decently uh, with that 12 power, should be just fine. This is the gun that I got my wife to hunt with this year. And we looked at a couple different guns. The Tika T3X was her favorite out of all of them. Of course she has expensive taste, uh, kind of like I do, but she decided that out of all the guns we looked at, the Thompson Center Compass is the one that she wanted uh, because it was a good price, and a, a nice lightweight package that she can tote around the woods easily. Her number one complaint last year when we went deer hunting is that my gun was too heavy for her to shoot. So we got this one for her. Overall, it weighs just over eight pounds, and that is a little better than my uh, 11 to 12-ish pound 308 setup. It does have 5R rifling, uh, and threaded barrel and a four round, I believe, uh, rotary magazine, which is a little bit different for a center fire rifle. We might later, and I probably will, um, put a Boyd's laminate stock on here, uh, something like their lightweight hunter model or something like that, uh, just to snazz it up a little bit. So that's the gun. We're gonna be doing some load work up for it, um, possibly testing out different muzzle devices. Uh, since this does have a threaded barrel, we'll see. First impressions of the gun, it's definitely not a high-end gun uh, from looking at it. The stock is, uh, it's a little, flimsy, the forend bends around. The barrel is decently free floated, I will say. It's not touching in any spot. There was a fair amount of factory weird grease on here that I, of course, stripped off. Um, but the bolt is still, it still kind of binds if you put anything other than perfectly straightforward pressure on it. So if you get your hand off to one side when you're trying to push it forward, it just doesn't go anywhere. You gotta pretty much push it straight forward. So, on first impressions, there's, there's that, um, but that's not really a huge deal. So, more to come in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, the next subject for today is the other thing I've been doing. And, of course, you all are familiar, if you've watched the channel for very long, with this gun. This is my 
6.5 Grendel AR-15 setup uh, topped up with a Vortex Viper HST 6 to 24 by 50. I was trying to get a good load worked up for this for a PRS match and I really tried to get a video made of the load workup, but things went so quickly and I ran out of time and had to do other things. And I ended up going with our 26.9 grain load of AR comp. Uh, 8208 XBR was starting to show some good results and I'm getting ready to do some testing with the Remington 7.5 bench rest primer. I just hadn't been able to get to any of that. So I ended up shooting the load we knew and it did extremely well, and I was so happy with it. We ended up right at 2,400 feet per second with about a six feet per second standard deviation, and that gave great results. Every target, uh, just about every target that I knew the distance for, I was getting hits on um, out to 700 yards. The first two shots um, that I shot with this gun, just shooting, Hornady's load data from the Ford off app. I just plugged it into the elevation turret, held it just a little bit for wind, and sent shots flying. And the first two shots out of this gun at 705 yards were making connections. I ended up placing fourth overall in that tactical rifle match. I guess it's not a sanctioned PRS event, but it was very similar in setup. I uh, ended up placing fourth out of 14 participants, and some of those were. Um, Pro Series PRS competitors. So I was really pleased with that. I was the only person shooting a gas gun. Everybody else had bolt actions, most of them uh, custom setups in 6x47, 6x5x47 Lapua, and um, a couple were shooting 6 Dasher. I actually had a chance on the very last stage of the match to shoot the 6 Dasher. Um, one of the uh, guys there was a gunsmith and he had one that he had put together and it shot amazingly well. I was dialing something like uh, 29 MOA of elevation, if I remember correctly, at 600 yards for this gun. That number's probably off, but it's in that ballpark. That six dasher was at 11 and three quarters at 600 yards. That kind of gives you an idea of the drop difference. Um, I was shooting between 495 and 600 yards with that six dasher and making hit after hit after hit. And it was just really um, kind of an eye opener to see what that gun can do. And it was rock steady. I mean, where this gun, it's decently heavy. You put that on, on target and get on target and it's staying pretty much where it should be. Um, but that six dasher, about a 20 plus pound bolt action rifle setup was pretty amazing. But I was really pleased with how the 6.5 Grendel AR did. I'm definitely going to be shooting it in more similar matches. Um, the 308 is also one that I'm going to be using in um, some of those matches pretty soon, I'm hoping. And maybe eventually I'll get uh, comfortable enough to set up a camera looking at me while I'm shooting and uh, see if I can actually get a little bit of it on, on film for you guys to see. So that's stuff that's coming up. I'm trying to think if there's anything else with the 6.5 Grendel we need to talk about. Definitely more load workup coming up next. Um, I've got a the 120 grain um, Hornady ELD that I'm excited to see how it does in here in comparison to the 123. From what I've heard, the bullet designs are just a little bit different and the 120 shoots better in some barrels and the 123 shoots better in other barrels. So we're gonna compare them and see. I think that is about it for the Grendel. Let me set this aside. Okay, this is my Ruger 1022 with a monstrosity on the top of it. Um, and I'm gonna talk about what that is in a second here. Uh, the gun itself is just a Ruger 1022 carbine. I've used this for years in apple seed shoots and stuff like that. You can see it's got the tech sight um, front sight up here, which is kind of a, a big thing but not nearly as big as what's on top of it. I've finally been able to pick up um, an ATN Excite 4K, and I am really excited to test this out. The first day that I had this uh, charged up and ready to go, I was able to zero it pretty quickly at about 25, 
uh, yards and get this ready for squirrel hunting. I am hoping that with this gigantic um, <laughs> video camera slash rifle scope that I'm able to get some actual squirrel hunting on film for you guys this year. Um, cause it's, cause squirrel hunting is something I really love to do. Um, the 1022 has proven to be my very favorite platform for it. Um, even better, and I never thought I would say this a year ago, um, but even better than my bolt action 17 HMR, which I love also, but the 1022, uh, with its 10 shot magazine, lets you just get those follow-up shots where you just barely miss and know exactly where to adjust whether it's for angle or maybe it's a little farther than you thought with the 22 you can see the bullet impact adjust your point of aim and take a second shot quickly and i've probably used that technique to get at least five squirrels on the ground this year that i missed on the first shot but was able to connect on the second shot so i hope to be able to show you guys all some of that with the atn x site um, and of course, the reason I got this was not uh, for the channel's purpose, believe it or not. I actually got this uh, to have night vision capabilities or a little bit of night vision with infrared to be able to um, hunt hogs at night coming up in January. It may only be the footage that we get from this scope, uh, but if so, that'll be better than nothing. I think that's just about all we have to talk about for today, guys. Um, thank you for being patient, those subscribers that have been waiting for videos. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to get anything up, um, but there is a lot to come here as soon as I can finish a couple of projects that I'm working on. Uh, it's going to be a busy hunting season. I'm going to get as much done of it as I possibly can and hopefully share some of that with you. Thank you all for watching. Um, if you enjoy this channel or reloading and shooting and hunting in general, please uh, give me a subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when new videos come. Um, I am encouraged by the subscribers that have jumped on. I believe I'm up to like 55 or 56 now. Um, encouraged by that and ready to keep making some more videos. So thanks again and have a good one.